All rise. All persons having business before the Honorable Chief Judge Beverly Howell of the United States District Court in and for the District of Columbia, now holding this naturalization ceremony, will draw nigh and give their attention. God save the United States of America and this Honorable Court. Please remain standing for the presentations of the colors, the national anthem, and the retiring of the colors. This honorable court is now in session. Please be seated and come to order. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to the Museum of the National Archives. Good morning. Thank you. OK, we're all awake on this beautiful day. Today is a memorable and important milestone for all of you who are about to come, become new citizens of this country. Uh, as the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, it is both my privilege uh, and my pleasure to preside over this naturalization ceremony this morning. The ceremony began this morning with the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard presenting our nation's flag and the flags of the different branches of the US military so that we can show our pride in our country and the military servicemen and women who helped defend its security. The flag is an important symbol and we are fortunate to stand in this rotunda of the National Archives next to the foundational documents that give meaning to the flag and our country. You're gonna hear later from very special speakers, the acting Archiv archivist of the United States, Deborah Wall, Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs for the Department of Homeland Security, Marsha Espinoza, and Roger Bennett, who's a writer and a filmmaker. Before we turn to our speakers, the court recognizes uh, Anta Lee McClure, a deputy clerk for the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, who will introduce those persons seeking to become new citizens. May it please the court. When your name is called, please stand and answer here or present and remain standing. France, Paris, Cameroon. Imran Majawa, India. Jessica Odangwa Chu, Mongolia. Carmen J. Walter, Germany. Jurgen Netka Nazir, Albania. Natalka Piznia, Ukraine. Krishnan Jaganathan Karakudi, India. Natalia Victor Kittleson, Moldova. Reza Mahmoudi, Iran. Anna Julie Quintanilla Blanco, El Salvador. Nils Petter Alban Sindström, Sweden. Sophia Ludna Sheik, Pakistan. Sophie Lagrace Asunga Akua, Cameroon. Paula Berenstein, Mexico. Andrew Ayomidi Iwiyemi Sasanya, UK. Gia Jillian Montgomery, China. Here. Bernardo Weaver, Brazil. Guillamin Ngacha Lo, Cameroon. Ismelda Maricela Diaz del Cid, El Salvador. Alexandra Zarina Meneze Rutledge, Canada. Cindy Shinyan Lin, Taiwan. Sujin Cho Ku, Republic of Korea. Olatunde Aragon Ihirima, Nigeria. Nadia Leslie Bremer, Peru. Dudane McGill Kazembe, Congo. Your Honor, there are 25 applicants for naturalization. Each of the applicants has been examined by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, and the government has completed its investigation in each case. It's been determined that each applicant is eligible for naturalization at this time. I move that upon taking the oath of allegiance to the United States of America, each applicant present, having answered to his or her name, including those prayers for name change, be granted naturalization as citizens of the United States of America. The motion is granted. So please remain standing. Each of you, please raise your right hand as I administer the oath of allegiance. Please repeat after me. 
I hereby, hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince Potentate state, or sovereignty, potentate, state, or sovereignty, of whom or which, of whom or which I, have heretofore been I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, subject or citizen that I will support and defend, support and defend the, Constitution and the, the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America. Against all, enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic that, I will bear true faith that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the same that, I will bear arms that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States, on behalf of the United States when required by the law, when required by the law that I will perform Non-combatant service, non service in the armed forces, in the armed forces of, the States, of the United States when required by law. When required by law. That I will perform work, will perform work of, national importance, of national importance under civilian direction, under civilian direction when, required by law. when required by law. And that I take this obligation, freely, this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, any mental reservation or, purpose of evasion. or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations to each of you. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States of America, America to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Please welcome sixth grade students from Alice Deal Middle School who will recite the preamble to the U.S. Constitution.
Please welcome to the stage the Acting Archivist of the United States, Deborah Steidel Wall. Good morning. Welcome to the rotunda of the National Archives and congratulations to America's 25 newest citizens. I'm so happy for you. Thank you to the students from Alice Deal Middle School for the preamble. You did a great job, and you'll probably remember every one of those words for the rest of your life, or at least when you're my age. <laughs> and thank you, as always, to Chief Judge Beryl Howell for presiding over today's ceremony. The National Archives is so proud to host this naturalization ceremony with the Department of Homeland Security, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, Citizen and the United States District Courts for the District of Columbia. This is the first ceremony we've had since 2019, and we're very glad that they're back. This week, we celebrate the 235th anniversary of the ratification of the United States Constitution. There is no better place in the world to become an American citizen than here in this room. Behind me is the original Constitution, the basis on which our government is structured and in your oath of allegiance today, you pledge to uphold this constitution. Excuse me, my papers have stuck together. Okay, here we go. And to my right is the Declaration of Independence, the parchment that our founding fathers signed in 1776 in Philadelphia, setting in motion the path to our nationhood. And to my left is the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. They spell out the basic personal rights and freedoms that are guaranteed to every American. They include freedom of speech, religion and the press, the right to petition the government, and the right to due process of the law and a speedy and fair trial. These are your rights now. Naturalization ceremony days are always my favorite day here at the archives, and I never fail to get emotional. emotional. There's my sheer joy for you all and the promise that your journey represents, and I also think about my own ancestors, my distant paternal ancestors who fled failed revolutions in Germany and a potato famine in Ireland in the mid-1800s, and uh, much more immediately, my beloved paternal grand maternal grandparents, Maria Abad Martinez and Francisco Rodriguez Hill, who came to America in the 1930s for economic opportunities unavailable in their native Spain. Their immigration story heavily shaped my own identity and worldview, and I wish they could see their granddaughter today standing in front of America's founding documents and welcoming new citizens and know how grateful she is for their courage and sacrifices. So many Americans have stories like mine, and now you, our newly naturalized citizens, will have your own American story. We have billions of pages of records here at the National Archives. Become an Ameri becoming an American citizen means that you will now be part of the National Archives because your naturalization documents will eventually be a part of our holdings. So maybe someday your descendants will look at those documents to learn more about your story. So again, my deepest congratulations to you all. Now, I would like to introduce the Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs, Marcia, es Marcia Espinosa, who oversees the Department of Homeland Security's public outreach, media, strategic, and incident communications, and serves as the principal advisor to Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas on all internal and external communications. Please welcome Marcia Espinosa. Thank you, Deborah, for the kind introduction and for hosting us here today at the archives. It's pretty incredible to be here. I've only been here once and I had to wait in a really long line to get in, so you all are very, very lucky um, to be here where history is housed and where today history is made. Just being in this room is a tremendous honor as a public servant and as a US citizen, but being with you all is truly a privilege of a lifetime. Um, thank you to Chief Judge, or sorry, Chief Judge Howell, 
uh, Roger James Bennett and the students of Alice Deal Middle School and everyone who made this beautiful ceremony possible today. Most of all, thank you all for the opportunity to be part of your special day. I'm now so proud to call you my fellow Americans. All of us have a story to tell, a story of how we got to this remarkable moment, a story of what compelled many of us, our families, our ancestors, not only to make the long journey to this country, but to raise our hands and swear this oath to citizenship. It's a story that's unique and different than the person sitting next to you all today, yet somehow brings us all together as Americans, because our, our diversity is really our strength. And somehow, our stories bound us together with the tales of our nation's founders told in the pages here, living history in the National Archives. We're surrounded by that story here today of the men and women who put the names and lives on the line for an idea inked into the parchment of the Declaration of the Independence and the Constitution. The opening words of the Declaration are easily the most remembered part which we heard today. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Words, these words are often celebrated as signifying the beginning of an exceptional American history, one characterized, despite setbacks, by a progressive expansion of rights. But the closing words of the Declaration are far less known, and those words call to attention some of the hard truths that our country was founded on as well. This was a different time, and the United States was a different place, but it's a story that we can study, we can learn from, and it's a story that we can all help grow. My own story draws on its own thread in our country's tapestry. I was born and raised in New Mexico, Nuevo Mexico, and it's a place where parents and grandparents still pass down seemingly ancient traditions, language, religions, and memories of border crossings over our heads rather than under our feet things they heard from their predecessors, too. Our state takes inspiration from the history of Spanish influence over Mexican and Native American ways of living that found a home in the American Southwest and carries on centuries later. That's where my story began. And now in my professional life at the Department of Homeland Security, I have the honor of sharing other stories. Believe it or not, I get paid to talk about all of the great work that our department, our USCIS, and all of you are, are doing every day as naturalized citizens, the public servants I work with, the law enforcement, the military officers we saw, uh, my husband, who is also a Marine, who helped to keep us safe. And I truly believe that bringing all these threads together is only possible here in this nation in a democracy where it is best Everybody belongs, and everybody's story is valued. Where out of many, we can become one. And it may not seem obvious to you at first, but as immigrants, we are part of the same story. And you too may have sacrificed for the dream of a better life, of a free society, of a brighter future for yourselves, or for your families, or for just the next generation to come. You too, bring dynamic traditions and faiths and ideals to the table, and you too have a place in the United States. Because if we believe in these documents behind us in this room, then democracy means there's a role for all of us, a voice for all of us, a responsibility for all of us. And that responsibility isn't to be taken for granted. You earned your citizenship through time, dedication, determination, these questions are hard. Your work was hard. We acknowledge that today. But it doesn't end there. We know that. And I've spent most of my life in, in uh, public service. And I know firsthand what it'll take to write the next chapter in America's story. You. Your participation. Your votes. Your willingness to get involved in kids' schools. Your neighborhoods your decisions to knock on doors, show up on election day, and maybe even run for office. I'm looking at you kids back there. <laughs> so you've already done the hardest part by getting to this nation and reaching for this day of naturalization. So next, I hope you'll take the pen and the next step. I hope you'll see the Declaration, the Constitution, the 
Bill of Rights and everything here as living documents. That would truly begin, be, give meaning to your oath, and that would truly be an incredible story to tell. I thank you all so much for the chance to join you today. Congratulations. Thank you. Now I would like to welcome Roger Bennett, founder of the Men in Blazers Media Network, one of the most listened to football, or as we insist on saying, in the United States soccer, platforms in the world. Mr. Bennett, or Raj as he keeps telling us to call him, hosts a slew of podcasts covering multiple leagues in the men's and women's game. His television show, Men in Blazers, appears on NBC's Peacock. He's also the author of Reborn in the USA, an Englishman's love letter to his chosen home. It debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Roger Bennett once described himself as an American trapped in an Englishman's body. So luckily, he solved that problem by becoming um, a US citizen in 2018. We're thrilled he's joining us today, which also happens to be his birthday. Please welcome Roger Bennett. I think every American should come to one of these at least once a year. It really is. It's the best of our nation. Chief Judge Beryl Howell, Acting Archivist Deborah Steidel Wall, Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs Marcia Espinosa, my fellow new Americans, I am Roger Bennett, and it's an honor to stand amongst you and congratulate you on this life-changing occasion, your naturalization ceremony, in the week of Constitution Day, no less, the day we honor the framing of the Constitution itself on its 235th anniversary. There it is, right behind us, the foundational document that charts the course for the American ideal. I became an American on June the 1st, 2018. I've stood where you've stood. I've been surrounded by a delirious group of recently minted new Americans, incredible souls of every race, ethnicity, background, and human form. And that act of becoming an American citizen remains one of my most profound, beautiful, and deeply meaningful to this day. I was sworn in at the Pearl Street Courthouse, Lower Manhattan, as one of 163 individuals raising our right hands, hailing from 47 different countries around the world. And perhaps the most powerful moment came for me immediately after we'd been sworn in. And the room was still thick with a sense of the awe, meaning, and a heavy dose of relief. A combination of the feelings you're no doubt experiencing right in this very moment. And once the formalities had been completed, we all began to chat, as you will. And we shared stories of our journeys. And I learned that some of my fellow citizens had experienced long, painful odysseys to be in that room. They trekked huge distances across deserts or frigid mountain ranges, as that survived wars, famine, refugee struggle. And the one thing that we all shared that bound us and propelled us as new Americans was a profound sense of what the United States has meant to us in our lifetimes, particularly in our moments of challenge. The idea of America had acted as a beacon of hope and optimism. It's given us courage, tenacity, the belief our lives could be different, better, and also gave us the strength to pursue in that belief and change our future. And that's what makes this room so special. And that truth is also what makes this nation so singular. I grew up in Liverpool, England, a city which in the 1980s was overrun with mass unemployment. There was a heroin epidemic. And besides the football and the music, there was just an all-pervasive hopelessness. 
And my great-grandfather had actually fled Ukraine by boat at the turn of the 20th century. He was headed in his mind to Chicago, Illinois, the meat capital of the world. But then the boat docked to refuel in Liverpool and he saw the one tall building on the Liverpool skyline, thought he was in New York and got off a stop early. <laughs> and thus my, family were mar- thus my family were marooned for four generations in Liverpool rather than the American promised land of our dreams. And as a kid, when I was in Liverpool, I told myself I was merely an American trapped in an English boy's body. (laughs) And I'd never been to the United States, but I had the American flag and the Statue of Liberty painted on my bedroom wall, badly. (laughs) But they were the last thing that I saw every night before I went to sleep. They were my light in the darkness and only by inhaling everything American, the movies, the books, the clothes, the television shows, the knockoff pairs of Ray-Bans that I could get my hands on, could I understand that life could be lived out in glorious technicolor, unlike the northwest of England, where it was grimly ground out in black and white. It was really the American idea that helped me survive, gave me the belief my life could be experienced with a sense of joy, and hope and laughter, notions that I made real by moving here like you did at the earliest opportunity, becoming not only a citizen, but a gent who in my own imagination loves America almost as much as Bruce Springsteen loves America. Because that American idea has been the central one around which I've organized my life. Now been here for 29 years. I met my wife, (laughs) who's a New Yorker. I've had four kids. Each of them have American accents. <laughs> and I'm elated to say the love I feel for the United States, which was forged naively as a kid, still burns so brightly. Yet as an adult, that love has matured. It now exists as a kind of love where you know that the object of your affection, like everything in life, has strengths and weaknesses, and that being in love means that you commit to working hard at that relationship and never, never taking it for granted. And that document behind me, the Constitution, our Constitution, it begins with the iconic phrase, we the people. You are now part of that we. And I can tell you from experience, this moment of becoming a citizen is a profound personal transformation. One that turns your American dreams formally into an American reality. To become a citizen means to assume rights and responsibilities. The right to vote is amongst the thrilling, the right to vote is amongst the most thrilling and the most crucial. And despite that change, I ask you this, Never forget the core dream that brought you here. It's part of a shared dream that should burn brightly within the heart of every American citizen. A commitment to love this nation and to better it by being perpetually aware of the difference between the American dream and American realities and to dedicate yourself to closing the gap between the two. Because this constitution... God, sorry, what a mess. <laughs> I'm such a hot mess. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> oh. Because this constitution that we revere and celebrate this week is itself proof of the possibility to thrive through change. Indeed, the genius of America is that we can change. Martin Luther King, Susan B. Anthony, Ida B. Wells, Harvey Milk, Cesar Chavez, Grace Lee Boggs, and more and more are all proof of that. American lives live with courage, optimism, and hope, daring this country to live up to its potential. And this is what makes America extraordinary. And now, all of you are part of this work. Let us lift that mantle up together understanding our capacity, our responsibility as citizens 
is to dedicate ourselves to change for the betterment of all. As a great poet, Langston Hughes wrote, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet and yet must be. And our task now is to dream together and ground those dreams in our realities. I've got to say that again. Our task is now to dream together and ground those dreams in our realities. I wish you all enormous congratulations and most of all, courage. Thank you very much. Uh, you might have been a hot mess, but you brought, made all of us be a little bit of a hot mess as well, <laughs> Mr. Bennett. Th thank you for those remarks. I do join the archivist, Deborah Wall, Assistant Secretary Espinoza, and Raj, Mr. Bennett, <laughs> in welcoming all of you as our newest citizens. I hope that you've been inspired by the messages you've heard today and the service to our country of Ms. Wall, Ms. Espinoza, and to uh, the contributions to our culture and the inspiring remarks that Mr. Bennett gave to us today. I'd also like to thank the students uh, from Alice Deal Middle School uh, for participating in our proceedings by highlighting orally the preamble to our Constitution. I'm going to give you a little history lesson. The first three words of the preamble, we the people, were actually written by an immigrant, James Wilson, who arrived in this country from Scotland at the age of 23. He went on to become one of the founding fathers at the Constitutional Convention. And then, uh, close to my heart, he became one of the first six Supreme Court justices appointed by our first president, George Washington. So while our Declaration of Independence our Constitution and our Bill of Rights rest under glass all around us in the rotunda. The goals, the ideas, the framework of these aspirational documents live on vigorously to guide this country. When the framers signed our Constitution on September 17, 1787, hence why this is Constitution Week, 235 years ago, they recognized that this country would grow and flourish with new immigrants becoming new citizens. They reserved to the newly created federal government the power, and I quote, to establish all uniform rule of naturalization. That's in Article I, Section 8 of our Constitution. The importance of naturalized citizens was again recognized after the Civil War in our 14th Amendment to the US Constitution. This constitutional amendment states expressly that persons naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States. To commemorate the day that the Constitution was signed, Every September 17th has been named Constitution Day, and this week surrounding that date that we're in is named Constitution Week. So by your action today of becoming naturalized citizens, you are fulfilling a vision of America laid out 235 years ago and reaffirmed in the 14th Amendment over 150 years ago. In fact, most Americans in this country, as you've heard from our speakers already, are in this country because they themselves chose to come here, or their parents or grandparents, in my case, uh, my great-grandparents, made the courageous choice that each of you has made to leave the countries where you grew up, where you knew the language, where you had family and friends, to follow your dreams to this new country. This is not easy. And I know that you have waited 
you've studied, you've worked hard to arrive at this day. People come to America for many different reasons. Some leave the countries of their birth with sadness in order to escape difficult situations or even wars. But all who come here aspire to build better lives for themselves and for their children. It is just thrilling to see the number of countries from which you all have come from. And after this ceremony is concluded, we will have new citizens from over 21 countries, in case you weren't keeping count, as Ms. McClure was listing your countries of origin. America truly is a great melting pot, and we're all enriched and better for it, no matter where you came from today. Each of you will be able to say you are an American citizen. As citizens, you have rights that are protected under our Constitution and enforced, if necessary, in courts around this country presided over by federal judges like me. You have the right to practice your faith or not to follow any religion at all if you don't want to. You have the right to speak freely about matters you care about and the right to privacy in your home. As citizens, you are each equal in fundamental rights, equal before the law with an equal share in the freedom to pursue your own version of happiness. Of course, our Constitution does not guarantee that you will find happiness, but the founders of the nation intended in the Declaration of Independence to design a form of government where you are free to try, which is why happiness figures in, in that declaration. As citizens, we not only have rights, but we also have duties and responsibilities. As new citizens, I hope you make three choices about your lives here. First, I hope you choose to be involved. We are a self-governing people, and self-government works best when citizens are involved and informed. You should seek to inform yourselves. Read and listen and understand the choices we face as a nation. An educated citizenry is essential to the continuation of a self-governing government. Your children and grandchildren will learn the duties of citizenship by watching you. When you go to vote, take your children with you to see how you do it. We have elections every two years at the federal level and a presidential election that happens every four years. Pay attention to the news and to what our elected officials say. Talk to your children about that and about what you hear. Teach your children through your actions that not only are we free to complain about our political leaders, we can vote to change them or to keep them. This decision can be important for you and the direction you want for our country. The United States may not be perfect, but we have a very powerful tool in the voting booth to make changes and improvements. I also hope you make a second choice. Choose to make a positive contribution to the community in which you live. We expect you to be law-abiding, but as citizens, expect more from yourselves than that. We may not all be able to contribute to our cultural entertainment, like Mr. Bennett, or to perform public service at the level of our archivist, Ms. Wall, or Assistant Secretary, Marsha Espinoza, but we can all do our part, whether it is picking up litter, helping a neighbor, volunteering at a children's school. Finally, I hope you also choose to share your stories. Many Americans take their citizenship for granted. By telling your story about why you chose to come here and what you went through to get here helps your fellow Americans appreciate what we have in our country. Plus, America is a richer place because of your stories, and the cultural experiences that you bring here with you because America's strength is in the diversity of our people. So choose to be involved, 
choose to make a positive contribution to your community, and choose to tell your stories. By your conduct and qualifications and actions here this morning, you have each earned your rightful place to be called an American citizen. So congratulations to you all. The court now recognizes Mr. King to close today's proceedings. All right. The ceremony is now concluded, and this honorable court is now adjourned. Please be seated. We ask that guests please remain seated as the certificates are given out. So the way we're going to do this is we're not going to shake hands to avoid any transmission of anything. So um, if you could just come up, you can all, the first row can stand up and come stand in front and then collect your, unless you've already done that, gotten your certificate, uh, collect your certificate from Ms. Bacour, walk around and then come back to your seat. And then we'll, after the first row is done, we'll move to the second row. <laughs> 